Monday morning, folks. Good to have you here. I'm Martha McCallum. And I'm Greg Jarrett in for Bill Hemmer. This with reports of hundreds killed in the streets of Syria as the government tries to crush a revolution there. More than 200 people dead in 24 hours, and now the toll may be even higher than what we saw in Libya before NATO forces finally stepped in. Washington pushing for a coalition to stop the violence. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton warning of a catastrophic outcome if we do not act. But one of the biggest stories over the weekend with regard to this is that Russia and China put up roadblocks at the U.N. to try to do something about this situation. What happened yesterday at the United Nations was a travesty. Uh, those uh, countries that refuse to support the Arab League plan uh, bear full responsibility for protecting the brutal regime in Damascus. Strong words uh, from Hillary Clinton with regard to Russia and China. Leland Vittert is live on this story for us in Jerusalem. What are you hearing about what's going on on the ground right now in Syria, Leland? Right now, Martha, we can confirm that all U.S. embassy staff and their families are out of Syria. And there's really two reasons that the U.S. government pulled the embassy staff out. Number one, it was simply too dangerous on the ground there. U.S. embassy staff had come under attack. In addition, it is really a statement by the government about how upset they are with the Syrian regime that over the weekend continued its assault on the town of Homs. Things there have gone from bad to worse. There is a siege now laid to that city as Syrian army government tanks now surround it, and they are bringing in reinforcements, firing indiscriminately into residential neighborhoods. At last count, upwards of 300 people have been killed since this assault began, and not only that, Countless wounded medical supplies are very, very tight right now inside homes. It's impossible to get more in there. In fact, right now there are a number of hospitals that have been reported being hit by artillery shells. Martha? So who's helping uh, militarily? Who's helping the Syrian government with this crackdown, Leland? It's really incredible. We're now hearing a report that a top Iranian general is inside Damascus helping organize this assault on these protesters. And not only that, China and Russia, as you mentioned, were behind the veto at the United Nations, keeping that resolution from passing. And just today, we saw dissidents and activists inside of Syria burning Russian and Chinese flags. They are begging for help from the outside world. But because of those UN vetoes, it does not seem like they are going to get the kind of international support that we saw in Libya. And right now, reports on the ground from Syria say it is much much worse there than it was in Libya before that NATO intervention. But it seems as though the Syrian government and the Assad regime has been emboldened by the UN veto and now feels they can just go ahead and kill as many people as they want. Back to you. What an incredible story. And Hillary Clinton clearly devastated uh, by that news from Syria and Russia. You see the signs in the streets save humanity that those people are holding up. Leland, uh, thank you very much. Leland Vittert on that. Greg? Syrian embassies all over the world coming under fire as this uh, bloody crackdown continues. Seven embassies from London to Australia attacked by mobs of angry protesters. Take a look at this. Outraged demonstrators smashing windows, even setting fires, destroying furniture and computers. Chaotic scenes unfolding in Egypt, Kuwait and Greece. A little background right now on this situation in Syria. It has a population, the country does, of 22 and a half million people, slightly fewer people than you have in Texas, for example. About 12 percent of the population lives below the poverty line in Syria, more than 19 percent unemployment in the country, and more than half of the population is 25 years or younger. Uh, very youthful pop populations all across uh, this right. part of the world. Human rights groups releasing estimates showing the extent of the bloodshed in in Syria, activists say the government has killed about 7,000 Syrians and is holding 40,000 others. 260 people were killed on February 4th alone in the city of Homs. More than 7,000 Syrian refugees now in Turkey. And the United Nations says it has stopped compiling a death toll because it is too difficult to get information out of Syria.